All right, this is section 7.3. We're going to be doing trig identities. We're going to try to prove the identities given. Um, we can do these by hand. Um, I'm going to attempt to try to get them to match what the computer is and give the justification. Uh, but there are several ways. And um, this first one, they kind of give you fill in the blank. So they're letting you know what step to take first. So we have secant x minus sin x tan x and then across we have equal we have a blank spot so they've changed one thing and they still have minus sin x tan x alright so we can rewrite almost well all of the trig functions we can rewrite in terms of sine or cosine so that's what we're going to start doing here we're going to have um, Secant, we're going to rewrite that as 1 over cosine. That's the reciprocal identity. 1 over cosine x. All right, so that's going to be our first blank. <coughs> that's going to be called the reciprocal identity. And we're going to do 1 divided by cosine x. All right, then our next step, <coughs> our next step. Okay, we're going to bring this down, and now they're changing this next part. So we have 1 over cosine x, which we've already changed, and then minus. We have the sine here, sine x, but we can change tangent in terms of sine and cosine. Uh, tangent is equal to sine x divided by cosine x. All right, so we can do that part. And that is what they call um, the tangent identity uh, converting that to terms of sine and cosine so we have 1 divided by cosine x and then over here in the next one we have uh, sine x divided by cosine x okay so now <clears throat> we're going to distribute okay we're going to simplify this so this is kind of like sine over 1, just multiply straight across top, top, bottom, bottom. So this gives us 1 over cosine x minus sine times sine is going to give us sine squared x over cosine x. All right, sine squared x over cosine x. So we have 1 divided by cosine x and then in the next bubble we have sine squared x divided by cosine x let me see if I can get this right I'm going to delete this in front then all right so sine squared x minus cosine x this is by multiplying the two factors. So all we did was multiply these two factors together. All right, now we're going to uh, simplify. So we got two parts left. So since we have the common denominator, we can combine these two. So as one fraction, we will have 1 minus sine squared x over cosine of x. So we have 1 one expression 1 let's do a division bar first 1 minus sine squared x divided by cosine x and this will just be by right with a common denominator and then lastly this is kin to one of the um, trig identities namely sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1 if you move or you subtract cosine squared x from both sides you will get that cosine so you subtract sine squared x from both sides I think I said cosine subtract sine squared x from both sides that will leave you with cosine squared x on one side equals 1 minus sine squared x so we can substitute um, cosine squared x right here using the trig um, identity, what the Pythagorean identity is the name of it. 
So we get cosine squared x divided by cosine x. So that's going to be Pythagorean identity. Uh, COS, do the division bar first. COS, COS squared, cosine squared x divided by cosine x. This will be Pythagorean identity. And then lastly, we will reduce, divide out one of the cosines, and this is by divide out common factor. 